Hey there, Alex Kidman here. And I had a viewer query the other day on one of my phone reviews asking why my battery tests differed from another reviewer's, which differed from the manufacturer's claims, and kind of bemoaning the fact that there wasn't one standard global battery test so that we could all compare more fairly and evenly. And look, on the surface, that sounds grand. That sounds like a really great idea. But only on the surface. And I'm not having a go at the viewer. Please do continue to put comments and thoughts and observations on my reviews every time you have one, as long as it's you know respectful and polite, that's fine. If it's not, I'll just delete it. But I digress. Please continue to comment. But to get back to the point, it's a decent enough question, but it's a complicated question, or at least the answer to it is kind of complicated. Let's dig into it. So in terms of international standards, well, look, yeah, there are battery testing standards that sort of apply to the area, I'll say. As an example, there's an ISO test for lithium ion batteries, but it's specifically for EVs. And unless you want an EV sized phone, not really applicable. There are other standards that get closer to do with testing smaller lithium ion batteries than you find in your typical EV, but most of them are to do with safety or they're very typically specific to people who are manufacturing batteries that go into our tech devices, not so much testing those devices in a specific way to see how a consumer might actually use them. And therein lies the rub, because then we have to bounce to the manufacturer claims. And look, you've always got to take manufacturer battery claims with a very large grain of salt because they're almost always qualified in some way. Let's take Apple as an example. What does it say about its estimated battery life for the iPhone 16 Pro or 16 Pro Max? So those are the figures. But the key qualifier here is the whole business of up to timing because up to can do a little or a lot of heavy lifting. If I got 26 hours and 59 minutes of battery time, that's up to 27 hours, but then so too is one hour and five minutes. And I know which battery life figure I'd much rather get. There's also something delightfully charming and kind of retro about Apple continuing to include just an audio playback figure as part of that equation. And look, yeah, sure, people do listen to music on their phones all the time, but does anyone treat their really expensive smartphone purely as an iPod anymore these days? I don't think they do. And it's the same story, of course, for those brands that list a standby time for their phone. It's a bit of a throwback to the era where all you did with a phone was make and take calls and maybe play a game of Snake. And yes, I was working as a tech journalist when that very much was a thing. And again, not totally irrelevant these days, but very few people are actually on their phones 24 seven. But still, it's not all that we do with our smartphones these days. And that's the big problem, the big challenge for battery testing. So some people do just want a phone that is primarily just going to be a phone for making and taking calls. And maybe they just need the smartphone features for accessing government services. Where they have to, they'll use an app because they're forced to. But other people want a phone that documents their digital lives 24 seven for Instagram or TikTok or whatever. They're forever taking photos and videos of their wonderful existences or allegedly wonderful existences anyway. Lots of other folks may use their phones for lots of social media doom scrolling over and over and over again. And others may play games, either casual brain idlers or full on near triple A titles, depending on your gaming preferences, or maybe a mix of the above and then some. And all of these approaches use up a phone's battery at a different rate. Honestly, there hasn't been a phone developed that I can't personally send flat within a day very, very easily if I put my mind to it. Though it is more typical these days to see most phones last out a day's moderate usage, but again, that's an imprecise and subjective term. And that's also why even if there was a standard battery test, it might not be that much use unless you only ever used your phone in that standard way. So I should get on to how I personally test mobile phone batteries. Although if you've watched any of my phone reviews, you've probably heard me say this before a few times. So I test with a 1080p YouTube video with the phone set to maximum brightness and moderate, typically mid-range volume, full screen for a period of three hours from a fully charged battery. For a limited set of typically budget phones, that might be 720p because I can't do 1080p, but that's the basic battery rundown test that I run first and foremost, along with more anecdotal testing. 
I've only recently started running that test up to three hours, so some older figures that I use for comparison might only represent that single hour, but that single hour still has value on two levels. Firstly, I look for whether or not a phone drops below 90% battery in that first hour, because a phone that drops below 90%, typically in my experience, will have trouble lasting out a day's typical usage, and nobody really wants that. Most of us can recharge our phones at least once a day, but a phone that can't last a day, that's a big problem. It is relatively rare these days, but you do still see it sometimes, especially at the budget end of the phone pool. Those figures, of course, also give me a comprehensive base to work from. So if we're talking flagship phones, and I see that one hits 98% after that first hour of testing and another one hits 91, well, they're both gonna last the day most likely, but that 98% phone, that's gonna last a whole lot longer typically speaking. And that means more time on standby if you're a light phone user or more app usage time if you're a more heavy duty user. But either way, that's a better battery life phone, typically speaking. So look, that's a different approach. And it is one that I do also supplement my own battery testing with, but it's a more anecdotal test. And that's the precise problem with running this kind of test. Now, I am not rubbishing people who are doing those tests. They are real world tests. That is their real conclusion. That is really what happened to them. And that's fine and that does have a level of value. But the problem is on a given day of anecdotal testing, I might use my phone a whole lot. I might play a whole bunch of games. I might watch a whole bunch of videos. I might be researching stuff. I might be using it as a mobile hotspot. I might be really giving the battery a kicking. And then on the very next day, I might be stuck in a bunch of meetings where my phone's in my pocket and I'm really not using it that much at all. And I'm gonna get wildly different battery life figures on those days. And of course, that's just my usage. Your usage could vary. And your usage could also vary depending on not only the kinds of apps you use, but where you live, because certain apps are very popular only in specific markets and a given social network app that's particularly popular in Japan, for example, might be much more conservative in its battery usage than one that's super popular in the US or vice versa. Different versions of an app might be more or less battery hungry depending on how optimized they are. And that could vary across platforms too. So the Android version might be wonderful at battery life and the iOS version might be a battery hog or vice versa. And all of that introduces variability. And variability, of course, is the enemy of that kind of precise testing. Anecdotal testing absolutely has its place. And where I hit a phone that doesn't live up to my expectations based on that early YouTube battery test, yeah, I'll totally note that. I'll totally say, well, okay, it tested like this, but actually in day-to-day -day usage, it was a little bit worse. It was a little bit better. But anecdotal testing cannot be the end story of it. It's a great word, Bunker. Try using it in a sentence today, but I digress. And it's not the point that I'm trying to make. If you're looking at a review, whether it's one of mine or someone else's, and I would encourage you, because tech ain't cheap, read and watch lots of reviews. Work out which reviewers tend to test the things that you like or whose positions you tend to agree with or where you find, yeah, I like what they do or I agree with what they've seen based on what I've found with my own gadgets. That's fine, totally, totally fine. But where they are transparent and upfront about their battery testing, that's good because that can give you more confidence in what they're seeing over the longer term. Where it's more anecdotal, maybe a little less confidence. But that's not to say that anecdotal testing doesn't have its place because the biggest single problem with a universal battery test is that nobody's usage is universal. Everyone's usage varies a whole heaping bunch. And this is where you have to think about your own battery usage, really. If you're the type that just wants a phone for a phone, and there's nothing wrong with that, then yeah, you still want good battery life, of course, but you're not gonna hammer a phone quite as heavily. And maybe a cheaper phone that doesn't do quite as well in the battery life sex is still gonna be perfectly adequate for you. Whereas if you're a really heavy duty app user, whether you're a gamer or a videographer or just endlessly on your social networks, I'm not judging any of those, they're all perfectly fine uses for a phone, then you probably do wanna look for something that gives you that bit more battery life endurance because you really are gonna tax a phone. Also bear in mind, of course, when I'm testing a phone, basically when anyone's testing a phone, they're nearly always doing it off brand new stock, brand new batteries in best possible condition. Over time, 
battery life degrades, but also over time, certain models have really specific battery optimizations in play. And often the time that I have to test a phone, those things are really only just starting to kick in. So I don't really see those. And those can of course have a big effect on the long-term battery health and long-term battery life of a given phone. Now, I know that's not a full, complete answer to this question, but that's because there isn't a full, complete answer to this question. Happy to take any comments, happy to discuss respectfully with anyone who's watched this far. And in fact, thank you if you have watched this far. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.